Hello, I'm Michaela. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, thank you for stopping by. And let me say, Happy Pride Month. And for this video, it's not going to be the actual anime itself that has to do with Pride Month, but a certain character. So make sure you stay tuned to see what I'm talking about. So, let's get into it. This was another anime that I decided to binge, that I needed to binge this anime because it was also on Funimation and I didn't know how this, once again, Funimation and Crunchyroll merge thing, but I binged it and I am so glad that I found this anime and I finished it. I'm just now talking about it. <laughs> so, let's see. Alright, this is a space, space adventure like no other. A group known as Team 5B, nope, Team B5, all go on an excursion together. When the group arrives at their campsite, suddenly things take a turn. A mysterious sphere of black light, short answer, a black hole or wormhole, whatever you want to call it, sucks everybody into outer space. They become stranded. Then luckily, they find an abandoned ship that they call Astra. I'm going to go ahead and say major spoiler alert. I'm going to talk about major plot points and that affect all the characters and details that only refer to certain characters. So you've been warned. All right. So first of all, I believe they figured out this halfway through of the show. I believe that all nine of the characters or the group that's going into outer space have something in common. And they're all clones of the people that raised them. Notice how I didn't say parents, because not all of them are actually parents. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I gotta say, the majority of these adults are were looking out for themselves to live through their clones. They were making them into vessels so they can be reincarnated. So, yeah, that's weird. <laughs> But they didn't want to get found out by the government and they didn't want to get arrested. So they're trying to kill them all in space and get rid of the evidence. If you want to find out how, you need to watch the show. Because I'm going to say about that. Fact, all right. Now let's jump to certain characters. Here we go. Now, Luca, played by Kieran Strange, one of my favorite characters. He's a curious boy and a talented engineer. He's usually repairing the Astra when it's needed. And we'll get back to him. Now, Ogre, played by Christopher Dontrell Piper. He's quiet, antisocial, but intelligent, who grew up being an outcast in his family. He didn't get along with everybody. It takes a while for him to open up to the others. But there's a reason for that. His older brother, who was a freelance journalist, died because he knew too much. This led to Ogre hating Marco Esposito, which is Luca's dad. Ogre pulled out a gun on Luca since he blames him, guilty by blood relations. However, this is where we learn he was adopted. Plus, Luca tells the group that he is intersex. He has an androgynous, androgynous, I can never know which one's the right way to say it, body with sexual characteristics of both sexes. Although he identifies as a boy, Lucas says he doesn't consider himself a man or a woman. <clears throat> and his identity can change. I also found out in the manga that he's bisexual. I mean, there's a saying in the manga that he says sometimes he finds Aries pretty and Kana Kanata? Kanata? Yeah. Hot. <laughs> Not sure why they didn't include that in the anime, but sometimes things get cut, which is very unfortunate. Sometimes they're the best parts. But thought that was interesting to throw it in there. Back to the Ogre situation. Ogre thought Luca knew what happened to his brother since he was going to be next in line to be the senator. But it was believed that only men could have power positions. Luca's dad didn't think he was a man because he was intersex. So that's what I want to highlight because my mind was 
blown at this very moment and just the point of the story anyway now let us get into some more characters Kanata played by Josh Greeley he's an optimistic guy with great athletic ability and who basically volunteered to become captain of the Astra himself the group wasn't fond of the idea at first but eventually he knew, or they knew, that he was the right guy for the job. His lifelong dream is to explore outer space and be captain of his own ship. Ares, played by Megan Shipman, she's kind of kind of portrayed as an airhead and sometimes has flashes of inspiration. She wants to make friends with everyone and there is something interesting about her, but I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> Gotta watch the show. Charts, played by Jason Liebrich. I think I said that right. Maybe. He's a good-looking guy who loves aliens and anything to do with biology. He can figure out a lot about a planet's ecosystem with no prior knowledge. He uses his cooking and botany skills to keep everybody well-fed. Zach, played by Aaron Roberts. Stoic guy who's extremely intelligent. He has a space pilot license, which is why he's the main pilot of the Astra. His father works in the biotechnology world industry. Eatery, played by, ooh, I'm not going to say this name right, sorry, Sakiwa Ba, mm. a rich heiress who is the daughter of a famous doctor. It's difficult for her to trust anybody else except for Zach since they are childhood friends. She received very little attention from her mother when her mother was always working on a project with Zach's dad. Funicia, or the nickname they use, Funi, played by Danny Chambers. Chambers. She is Kitari's adopted sister. She carries around a puppet named Beagle with her, and she's cheerful as she just wants to get along with her sister. Or tries to get along with Kitari. Yunwa. I cannot remember how to say her name. Yun. I'm just going to say you for now. Played by Dawn M. Bennett. She's shy and kind and quiet and is always apologizing for everything she does. This was a result of her mother always berating her and told her to act or not to stand out. That's why you see her distance herself from everyone. If any of this information confused you... Well, I guess you need to watch the show so you can find out what actually happens. There's a cliffhanger after every episode. It makes you want to keep watching. There's so much happening all at once. You'll never get bored. I promise you that. The ending was satisfying, but I still want more because I love these characters. They're just so engaging and you learn to love them if you don't already love them in the beginning. So go watch it on Funimation if it's still there. <laughs> but you can also order it on DVD because it is going to be worth it. I promise you because I am going to order it on DVD. Tell you that right now. And there's only 12 episodes. Only the first and last episode are an hour long. So that's interesting. So please, once again, I can highly recommend you to check this out and enjoy it. So, comment down below if you're going to try and check this out, because I really want you to. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter and Instagram so you know what I'm doing to stay updated. Like, comment, subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm Michaela. I'll see you later. Bye. <laughs>